Well, if you guys have already seen it, check out part one first, but this is part two.
Well, I guess that pretty much concludes this thing. Now, I have to say, um, for my first, like, real big, like, where are you going? Get out of here. For my very first, like, big, like, 3D project, this tugboat thing actually came out all right. But I guess it's not really too much to it. I mean, it's just an RC boat. It floats around and drives around in the water. How technical can you get? But for the most part, the boat uses all, like, standard airplane and uh, new RC, like, drone equipment. It doesn't really use any, like, the old-fashioned, like, RC boat parts. There's really nothing old in here, which is kind of a new thing. Brushes, motors, and all that. I'm really impressed with how powerful the Avrota motors uh, I've gotten this thing are. On the part with the monkeys, when the boat accidentally ran aground, that was unintentional. Basically, the monkeys pulled the back aft uh, end of the boat down to the water. Some of the salt water went over and got inside the boat. It's not perfectly sealed yet. So the salt water went, got on the receiver, and the whole boat went wide open throttle, drove up on the rocks, and it pretty much folded these giant brass propellers up like flowers. For the batteries of this boat, I have to really thank Lumineer for sending me some batteries. They made this thing possible to get a tiling to have power, mainly because I had these really, really old Gen Zace batteries. Now, these things are really, really well built, actually, because, um... Well, it had a little bit of moisture inside of it, but I cut open the shrink wrap to let the moisture out. But unfortunately, since this battery is so old, the cells have actually swollen. And right as I cut that tape, the whole thing even blew up. And I was like, this is this is nowhere near safe to travel on an airplane. So, huge thanks to Lumineer for sending me them things so I can actually have some batteries to take on the flight with me. Because um, there's no way I'm taking this. This is just way too dangerous. Now, as far as the FPV stuff goes, I actually didn't really use it a whole lot. Mainly because the ocean is pretty flat and the waves are really small, so there wasn't really anything totally worth interesting, worth recording and filming. Plus, it was a hassle to pull up my FPV goggles and set all this stuff up in Thailand. But um, that's kind of beside the point, and I may actually use that in a part three coming up soon. But a uh, huge thanks to Lumineer for sending me some antennas for these things. These AX2, like super mini circular polarized antennas, are pretty amazing with how small they are. And Runcam for sending me the uh, Runcam Swift Mini, which is awesome because it fits in the wheelhouse and I can put on a pan silver reel and look around. Now, as far as suppliers goes, I, I'm having a little bit of an issue with some of that stuff. I did order the stuffing tubes and boxes off of Banggood, which actually did ship in reasonable time and I got them. But unfortunately, the quality is like not super the best. Mainly, it's supposed to be like stainless steel shafts, but yeah, that, that looks like rust to me. So, uh... Not impressed with the quality of that stuff. I did actually order some of these Reboche shafts from like another boat in, a, in the past. Now that thing is really holding up really well, but unfortunately, I can't really find a supplier that communicates super well or ships within a super reasonable time frame. Funny thing is I actually ordered supplies for this boat, mainly because I actually ordered propellers for this thing way back in January. If my memory serves correct, it was January 18th, and right now it is currently May 27th. I haven't had a whole lot of luck contacting the seller. I did actually meet him in Toledo, and apparently the shafts and the, the propellers and everything are coming. But I've sent a few emails, I haven't really heard anything back, so I think motor, model boat people are kind of like the model boats themselves. A little bit slow. But I will let you guys know in the future if I do find any faster suppliers or at least anywhere to get parts because it's really really hard to find parts for these model boats but with that being said i actually ordered these propellers that i have in my hand off of ebay fortunately the ebay seller had these things and shipped them out really really fast they came from taiwan and i got them within about five days so if you guys are hunting for propellers uh go check ebay first these are m4 threaded uh a left and a right hand propeller i think it's uh the 174-12 style it's a 55 millimeter blade, so I guess that's all you really know need to know, because this ship can't really fit anything more than a 55 millimeter wheel under the um, shafts and propeller thing. It'll run to the hull if you put, try to put anything bigger than that. A few more things that you guys should probably know if you're actually going to build one and run one. You actually do have to add some ballast to this boat. Right now, there's a big steel weight in the front and a couple of like uh, lead weights in the back to get the boat down to the water line. The all weight of the boat ready for the water is about 17 and a half pounds so you'll need to get your boat kind of that heavy down low if you want it to float properly without tipping over um for the bow thruster i'm not sure how many people of you are actually going to do that but this thing has to be oiled after every run or at least every run in salt water for every run fresh water you probably need oil with corrosion x or some other similar uh oil to keep the rust off of the motor but so far it's actually survived the thailand trip just fine the thing has been saltwater plenty of times, and I've actually gotten lazy and not cleaned it. 
and it still runs just fine. I don't really see too much corrosion on the motor, which is pretty good for a brushless motor that's running wet underwater. For controlling the boat, you pretty much just need a standard two-channel radio, which is the minimum. I used a four-channel one. I actually made this transmitter for this, which you can kind of see in another video. I'll, I'll put the link down below where you can see this video of how I built this thing. This is also, yeah, waterproof and all that. I have to say, this thing actually turned out really well, at least in my own opinion, for my like third uh, Fusion 360 design thing. That's what I, that's the software I used to design this boat. It is actually completely designed from scratch. I just kind of made up some measurements in my head and started going from there and made this thing. And it's even more impressive to actually see some people actually building these things, which is pretty cool in my opinion to see people actually making my designs. So those are on Thingiverse too. You can find the updated design files for like the anchors and some of the new stuff they put on there. And also if I'm missing something, please let me know in the Thingiverse comments section or whatever. And I'll try to get the rest of the design files put out because I think I'm missing something, but I don't really know what I'm missing. But that being said, um, yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, click the little notification bell so you're notified of new videos and all that. Let me know what else you want to see me build. Yes, I'm building a submarine. That's going to happen soon. Just not sure when, but that will happen. But yeah, yeah, I guess I will see you guys in the next video.